Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Blender. And this is part two of a multi-part tutorial in which we take a look at how I went about creating this steampunk fish scene. And in each part, we'll be taking a look at a different component of the build. So let's get into it. So this is where we'd left things last time. We'd modeled our tail. And let me just come out of object mode. And what we're going to do today is to model this lower fin thing here with its little rotor and whatever. And the basic technique is essentially the same. And what we're going to do is we're going to add, to first start off with, a mesh plane. And let's rotate it through 90 degrees. Zoom out a bit to see where it is. Let's just select the move tool and move it down so it's in the roughly in the region of our plane like that. And let's switch on X-ray mode so we can see through to our reference there. Let's switch into edit mode and vertices. So with the move tool selected, we're just going to move that down to there this one into sort of here, this one down to there, and this one to here. So we've roughed out the shape of our fin. Then we need to subdivide it. So let's select the loop tool. And we're going to be a bit more selective this time. So let's come into faces mode so we can see what we're doing. We're going to sub subdivide it there. So conveniently, the center is exactly where we want it. And let's do another subdivision just drag it along to there for that other edge of this main sort of hub, as it were. Let's have another vertical subdivision roughly here, I think. And let's now have some horizontal subdivisions. So we want a, a row at the top there, so which we're going to extrude. Then we want a gap here in the middle of this sort of crease, as it were. Then we want to line up a set of faces for this fin here. So that's a, a row of faces that we can extrude there. Then we want to create another cut for this indentation here. And finally, another one just at the end here for the, the bottom fin. So then, as before, let's add a subdivision surface so we can see exactly what we're doing. So first of all, we can do what we did before with these indentations. So I've got the Move tool selected. And I'm just going to drag that back like that. Take this one and just move it in like so. And again, I don't want this sort of um, action happening here. So I'm just going to move that one out of the way so we get a better profile like that. And just kind of tidy up this line here. So we've got a nice smooth curve to it. So in this tutorial, I'm going to speed on through all this laborious vertex editing just to get everything in place. You know exactly what you're doing at this point if you've followed the previous tutorial. And I'm just going to slow down again for the, the important stuff. So I'm just going to up the viewport levels. Let's go to three again, just so we can get a nice smooth result. So that's, that's a fairly good start. Just think I want to sharpen up these points a little bit more. So I'm going to select the scale tool select those two and if we scale it down you can see we get a nice sharp point like that and I think that's better like that. We won't bother too much about this one at the top here. In actual fact what I'll probably do is just move this point up like that just to sharpen that up in that in a different way like that. Then I think we can look at extruding the fins. So let's come into a faces mode and let's select the faces in question. So it's easier if we come out of x-ray mode to select these faces. So select this and this, this and this, and this and this. And now we can extrude those. So E for the extrude tool, Y for the direction, and negative 0.1. And it gives us this. So now I'm going to select these edges here, these three top ones here. Control 7 for the bottom view. And I'm just going to move them down like that. If you remember, we created that profile like that for the other fins. So then let's switch out of subdivision mode. And what I want to do is I want to come to faces mode and delete these three faces here, X and delete faces. Then I'm going to select this central section of faces. And again, I'm going to extrude them. So E 
and y and negative 0.2. So it gives us this central hub here. I'm going to do a bit more face deletion. I'm going to delete this face, this face, and this face here, and X to delete. Then what I want to do is I want to come into vertices mode, and I want to do a bit more merging. So we're going to take these vertices here, and if you remember the shortcut for merge is M, so M and enter. We're just going to do it with all of these points here. M and enter, M and enter, and M and enter. And then if we switch back on subdivision mode, you can see we've got this nice flowing mesh. So next I want to loop cut this central section. So select the loop cut tool, put in a vertical loop cut like that. And I just want to flatten this off a little bit. So I'm going to select just this top row of vertices, this lot here, and I want to scale them on Y just to flatten them off. So S, Y, and zero. And you can see that's created a nice flat result there. And we might actually do the same here. So select all of these points here, like so, S, Y, and zero. Turn back on subdivision mode. And that just makes life a little bit tidier. So then we can look at this and just slightly adjust the profile here. It needs to come down a little bit. And just move that down there like that. And it creates that's much more interesting profile there. Let's turn on X-ray mode. I want to do a little bit of subdivision on this as well. So select the loop tool, subdivide here, and let's kind of create a nice little flare like that. And I'm going to take this top point here and drag it along like that. Looking down here, I realize that actually this point here needs to come down as well. It's the point at the back, and that needs to come down even lower than the other one like that. So then what I want to do is I want to cut a hole for this rotor in the, in the main assembly here. So in order to do that, I'm going to make a cylinder. So add mesh and cylinder. So first of all, let's rotate it through 90 degrees on X and let's just set the radius to something like 0.1 and then just move it down to here. I think I might have made that a little bit too small. So let's just scale it up just a little bit with the S tool. The guide there is not terribly helpful to us but gives us a rough idea. So it's this huge long tube here. Don't really care about how long it is because I'm just going to use this as a cutter. So I'm going to reselect my fin like that. I'm going to come to the modifiers and I'm going to add a Boolean. And then with the eyedropper, I'm going to pick that cylinder. If I turn that cylinder off, you see we've now got a nice hole cut in the hub there. So what I want to do is I want to fill the inside of that hub with some geometry. And what I'm going to do is take that cylinder, uh, turn it back on again, and I'm going to duplicate it because I can't actually use this one because it's the cutter. And if I modify this, it's going to change the cut. So select that in the viewport, shift D to duplicate and enter. Uh, let's turn off the first version, make sure it can't be rendered either because we, we don't want that. And uh, let's come to the side view here, turn on edit mode, vertex selection. We're going to grab these vertices here and make sure you've hit N to have this side view on here. We're going to have zero for that Z value. And let's put them at the center line there. And then we can grab these and we can move them in like that. So I just want this to be slightly protruding and let's switch back into object mode to check what we've done. Let's turn off X-ray mode. And I think that's just about the right amount of protrusion. So let's switch back into edit mode. Uh, let's select faces and select this face and X to delete faces. Select that back face and delete that as well. And then let's switch into object mode, come over to modifiers, and I'm going to add a solidify. So I think just that default is probably quite good. Now I'm not going to subdivide this. I'm just going to switch to Shade Smooth uh, and it doesn't quite work. And what we can do is we can switch into Edit Mode, just select the Loop Cut tool and just put in a loop cut like that just to sharpen it up a little bit. And 
you know, we're not going to be going in sufficiently to see that that's not smooth enough. Just keep the, it keeps the number of polygons down. So that's good. I'm going to switch back into object mode. And now I want to put a rotor in the center here. So to do this, I am going to use one of the add-ons that's built into Blender. I'm going to come to Edit Preferences and Add-ons, and let's just type Mesh. And we want, what we want to make sure is that we've got extra objects enabled. So enable that checkbox there. And because we're going to be adding a bolt as well, make sure you've also got selected this Add Mesh Bolt Factory. So let's now make our cog to go in the middle. So come to Add and Mesh, and you'll see that we've got gears and we want to select gear. First thing we want to do is rotate it through 90 degrees on X. Let's just leave it at the defaults, I think. Let's scale it down, so S and 0.1. Let's then move it into position like that. We've scaled it down a little bit too much. So let's scale it back up again by I like that. And our position is pretty good in the center of the tube like that. So if I switch into edit mode, you'll notice that this doesn't actually have an inside face. And what we're gonna do is make sure we're in edges mode. We're going to alt click here to select this edge loop. And we're going to hit F to fill it with a face. And then we're going to use the extrude tool and just extrude it out a little bit like that. Then the inset faces tool to just bring it in a bit like that. And then the extrude tool to extrude it back a bit like that. Inset faces just to inset it quite a bit like this. And just maybe extrude that one a little bit more as well. Just extrude it outwards like that. I'm just maybe going to scale that down a little bit. What we also need to do, and I'm going to have to hide some stuff in order to be able to see it. So I'm going to add a, first of all, a subdivision surface. And you can see the problem I have here is with these teeth of the cog. So I'm going to switch into edit mode, the loop cut tool, and I'm just going to drag a loop cut out like that to sharpen it up. I'm not going to worry about the back face because we're not going to see it. So no point in adding geometry that we don't need. Let's just up the viewport levels there. If we also switch to Shade Smooth, we could finesse this a little bit more. We could select that inner face and just do another inset faces like that. So then switch everything back on again. We just need to bring that out a little bit. So let's look at the side view. You just need to move it forward like this till we're sort of roughly there, I think. So the only other thing I want to do is to add a bolt. You'll remember that in preferences, we added the bolt factory add-on. So now we can come to add and mesh and right down the bottom there, we get bolt. So let's select that. Let's mm -hmm. zoom out. Oh, and see the absolute monster bolt. Now I love this add-on, but the idea of having a bolt that starts out like 5.5 meters across is a little bit curious. So anyway, we're not going to scale it here. What we are going to do is just reduce the thread length down to zero. It still leaves us with a thread, which is kind of hard to get rid of, but that doesn't really matter. So there are lots of interesting options here. First of all, I want to set the bit type and I'm going to select Allen. Uh, but there are some great, you know, there's the Phillips and uh, there's the Torx and whatever. And the other thing is I don't want it to be a hexagonal bolt. I want it to be a dome. So from the head menu, I'm going to select dome and that gives us this. So the only other thing I'm going to do in this menu is rotate it through 90 degrees on X. Then I'm going to scale it down. So S and 0.1, just to get a little bit more manageable. It's still way too big. So let's again scale it down. S and 0.1, and that's a little bit more like it. So what I want to do is I want to fasten it onto the surface here. I'm just going to move it out of, on Y a little bit like that, so it's well in front of it. And actually just let's move it sort of roughly into the right position like this. So in order to get it to kind of stick on the surface, I can come to Snap, so turn on Snap, and in the Snap menu, I'm going to select Face nearest. And then if we drag back, you'll probably see that it kind of popped onto the surface like that. So, oops, it's trying to snap to something else, but I've just turned off snap, move it away again. 
turn snap back on again and then just move it towards the surface like that, you'll see that it's kind of glued itself to the surface. Now the problem is the origin is on the base of the belt and actually we want it to be on the center of mass volume. So obviously that's right clicking in the viewport to get that origin menu. And then that is now going to snap more convincingly to the surface. So that's quite a handy thing to know. So the snap tool is really comes into its own when we are attaching things like bolts. So let's turn snap back off, off again. We need to select this main assembly and choose shade smooth. And that's looking a little bit better. You'll see that I've kind of got some ugly creases in here, which I didn't really sort of sort out. I was trying to go too fast. So I just did a bit of tidying up of some of those vertices just to get a more flowing result. And the other thing you'll notice that because we've turned on smooth shading, so we turn that off. And before it looked like that, it was kind of okay. But as soon as we turn on shade smooth, we're getting this sort of horrible creasing around our Boolean cutout. And we can solve that by just turning the solver to fast from exact. And you can see that's now tidied that up. So that's the end of part two. A lot of fairly interesting things in there I hope have been useful to you. So thanks very much for watching and maybe see you again on the next one.